Hello and welcome to It's the Economy and It's the State of the Economy. That is our topic today. We have two economists with widely divergent views. Sonal Verma of Nomura has been seeing global headwinds and India's higher interest rates raised over the past year, leading to a growth deceleration. GDP at 5.5%, this uh, uh, FY, FY24. While Upasana Chashra, the economist from Morgan Stanley, India, agrees with the Reserve Bank that at 6.5%, India will be one of the fastest growing economies in FY24. I have both these economists with me, so let us uh, hear them debate their views. Uh, Sonal Upasana, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Sonal, you're clearly the outlier here. Uh, the uh, majority is veering. They were closer to your number, but now everyone's crossed the 6% uh, Rubicon line and are moving towards uh, 65 So you tell us, why are you so pessimistic about uh, the growth number? Uh, is it global that is largely worrying you? Yeah, Lata, I mean, I, I think uh, I would call more realistic than pessimistic. Um, <laughs> okay. There are a couple of things. I think uh, one, uh, the global uh, side has been uh, resilient, um, particularly U.S., uh, but our view remains that uh, the recession in the U.S. Uh, lies ahead of us. Uh, for India, the spillovers are uh, therefore not just through the goods side of exports, uh, but will also be seen on services exports, which have been pretty resilient. Uh, yes. And our view is uh, it will also reflect in uncertainty weighing on uh, investments uh, going forward. So that's one. Uh, second, uh, just in terms of uh, India's own monetary policy normalization, uh, clearly RBI's you know, monetary policy has not over tightened. I think I would call it uh, you know, uh, more sort of normalized uh, monetary policy. But it's been a 250 basis point uh, rate hike. Typically, it takes about 12 months for the rate hikes to reflect uh, in uh, growth uh, numbers and, uh, of course, uh, therefore, thereafter on uh, inflation. So uh, our view is that, uh, you know, the last 12 months uh, are actually reflective more of the monetary conditions that were there a year before. Uh, and the impact of the monetary policy normalization of the last one year comes at a time when we will also see uh, the global uh, spillovers. And that's what's uh, basically driving our view that uh, cyclically there is a moderation that is likely uh, going forward. And that brings us to around five and a half. Okay. Uh, Upasana, what's your thesis? Are you not expecting that kind of a global headwind? What's the Morgan Stanley view on global growth itself? And uh, therefore, the likely impact on India, do you think the services exports, which have been doing well, will be under pressure? Thank you, Lata. So, um, yes, we do have a more constructive view than what we um, just heard. So we think that growth is being supported both by cyclical and structural factors. Cyclically, from a domestic standpoint, we are seeing stronger balance sheets on the corporate side and on the financial sector side, which is helping to improve the credit growth trend. Uh, high frequency data points that you're seeing you know, say for the month of April and May at the start of this fiscal year have been improving and sort of holding on to the strength that we saw in the March quarter. And uh, from a global perspective, while we are building in slowdown in global growth, uh, our house view for U.S. growth remains of a soft landing. So we are not building in a U.S. Uh, hard landing of, or a U.S. recession. Well, yes, but growth does remain low and subpar in the U.S. or the DM world as well. So we are taking that into our base case numbers for India's growth outlook as well. So we do expect that it will be felt more on the goods export side, where we are seeing that already in the numbers, and we do think that uh, goods exports would probably continue to decline in this fiscal year. Uh, but yes, on the services export side, we do expect uh, some, uh, some uh, cushion to come in. Uh, driven by the market share gains that India has seen on the services export side, which have risen by about 120 basis points versus pre-pandemic. So we do think services exports will continue to grow, but at low single digit levels. Uh, so that provides some, uh, some cushion from the external headwinds. But I think the primary story for India does remain the strength in domestic demand, which we think will continue. So we think that growth will probably sustain more closer to the numbers that we saw in the March quarter. And uh, we are for 
fiscal year 24 we expect growth at 6.2 percent a number on the calendar year is at 6.5 percent but going forward as well in fiscal 25 as well we do think growth remains above six percent oh sorry so your uh, 20 uh, calendar 23 number is 6.5 but the fiscal 24 number is 6.2 is that right that's right that's right okay Okay, now just to play Sonal's advocate, not that uh, she needs my advocacy, but uh, the uh, GDP uh, you know, inputs, if you saw in the fourth quarter, clearly net exports is an outstanding contributor. And if that were to take a hit, then it can be an outsized hit, uh, Upasna? So, uh, yes, so I think net exports were a big contributor in the March quarter. So after declining or dragging GDP growth in the previous three quarters, we saw a positive contribution in the March quarter. Now, if you think from a current account deficit side, and that will feed into finally how net exports impacts uh, GDP numbers, current account deficit is going to moderate or narrow from the fiscal 23 level. So in our view, we see current account deficit closer to 1.1% of GDP in fiscal 24. Uh, we estimate that fiscal 24 23 would have ended at around 1.9% of GDP. So in that context, I don't think this net exports contribution would be a big hit or a big drag again in the fiscal 24 numbers. We, you could see some volatility in these numbers, but probably uh, on a average for the fiscal year, again, these numbers would be better than what we saw for fiscal 23 as a whole. Okay. Uh, Sonal, now to play Upasana's advocate, uh, there has been, uh, you know, outsized gains uh, or, you know, better than expected numbers, outstandingly better than expected numbers in the U.S. The latest jobs data, uh, you know, if you want the economy to decelerate, you should be getting at least like, you know, below 100,000 100, jobs. And, you know, we've got 230,000 jobs. So the de deceleration may come, but is it not far pushed out? Uh, would you see it hit, uh, uh, according to you, in the second quarter itself on India? Yalata, I think, you know, uh, to be fair, there is a lot of uh, uncertainty on the uh, timing uh, of uh, when the impact will come through. We do think uh, recession is uh, likely because uh, U.S. is uh, seeing, uh, I mean, there are two aspects. One is the lagged effects of uh, monetary policy. Uh, when exactly do they hit? I mean, we know that there are long and variable lags. Uh, and second is sort of the... Uh, banking system, while things have uh, stabilized, there's also a tightening in credit standards. So you have a combination of uh, both the factors that are feeding yes. through uh, the economy, but it takes time. Uh, and when it exactly hits is the source of uncertainty. Um, I mean, you know, we are working with a base case of uh, the U.S. slipping into a recession in the September quarter. There is, of course, uh, you know, it's possible that the slip happens uh, later on. Uh, but uh, it would still be our base case. Uh, if you look at the U.S. Uh, goods versus services, the goods side of the economy, of course, is uh, already quite uh, weak and in recessionary territory, uh, and that's reflective in uh, exports uh, being weak uh, for countries like uh, India. It's really the services side which is uh, still strong. Uh, now, on the labor market, uh, the NFP has been uh, quite strong. And I, I think clearly the labor market uh, has been more resilient than uh, expected. Uh, but we need to, we know that labor markets are, uh, you know, a lagging indicator uh, of the uh, business cycle. Uh, and this time around, when inflation is quite high and nominal growth is uh, quite high, uh, there is also this money illusion uh, because companies still see higher revenues even if uh, profitability is under pressure and that sort of delays the impact uh, on the labor market. So uh, I, I, I do think that there is uncertainty uh, in terms of the timing of when uh, the hit comes through. Uh, we have a baseline that uh, we are working with, uh, which is uh, the September quarter. Uh, and uh, therefore, as far as India's FI24 is uh, concerned, I think even if there's a delayed impact, uh, we would still expect the impact to be visible in the second half of uh, FI24. Okay. Okay. Uh, Upasana, even if you don't go, uh, you know, all the way that Sonal is going, would you worry that uh, there can be some growth jitters even from the trends we are getting in Q4? You know, manufacturing... Uh, was 4.5, that was more because of base. But manufacturing for FI22, uh, FI23 was just 1.3%. And likewise, from the uh, consumption side, the uh, personal final consumption grew by just 2.8%. 
can these be roadblocks to even achieve that 6.2 that you're looking at? So, well, uh, Lata, we do think that, uh, you know, consumption growth, which has been a bit mixed in the last, uh, probably last two quarters odd, has, should now see signs of more broad-based strength and recovery. We are seeing that, you know, urban demand or uh, uh, services-related spend have been go uh, showing more robust growth, and that is evident if we look at the PMI services, which has been tracking at nearly 13-year highs. I think the divide between uh, the urban and the rural should narrow, and that will help help support uh, consumption growth and make it more broad based i think conditions are in place for growth to continue uh, you know or retain the robust momentum that we've seen because we don't really see any uh, any indications of misallocation or stress domestically which should create major roadblocks. Obviously, there can be risks that uh, can emerge, uh, primarily, I think, from the external side. So, you know, external or do, uh, global growth being much weaker than what we are expecting. We do highlight that in our bear case as yeah. well, both from a global growth perspective and from India's outlook perspective. Okay, okay. so now the differences are narrowing a, a wee bit between the two of you. But very quickly, uh, Upasana, you know, uh, would the rural growth, a, a, a whole lot of people expect that it will recover. We have an El Nino fear on our head. And we just spoke with one of the top FMCG companies, CFO. He said that rural is still contracting 3% for the industry, not for him. And urban is, of course, growing 3% for the industry. Uh, bets on rural are uh, a little optimistic, you think? Um, I wouldn't really say optimistic. I think over here probably the recovery in terms of timing could be uh, could be uncertain uh, because of the El Nino risk that has now come in. Uh, and, and I think that El Nino risks, uh, you know, obviously uh, it, it remains a big uncertainty, but it, even uh, it may impact the sentiment more than it may impact, you know, crop production or from an inflation growth, uh, actual uh, real economy variables perspective. Uh, and I think from a rural uh, market uh, growth perspective, uh, we are, you know, the labor market normalization for the rural economy is more or less complete and now okay. the inflation burden that was there in the last year is proceeding so i think there are some tailwinds uh, for rural demand okay oh i'm being warned i'm out of time so let me get to the policy itself uh, uh, sodal verma very quickly uh, therefore if growth is going to decelerate you are expecting an early cut uh, that's right lata i think uh, Outside growth, uh, even on inflation, while the RBI did uh, cut to 5.1, um, our tracking estimates actually suggest uh, inflation will be closer to 4.7 for FI24. So we do think there will be further downgrades, uh, lowering of the inflation projection. Uh, and uh, growth, uh, also, as we discussed, uh, our view is it will be closer to 5.5. So on our okay. forecast, actually, real policy okay. rates will become restrictive. So we're still expecting uh, the pivot. Uh, two cuts from uh, October onwards. Okay, and Upasana, your expectation of rate cut would be? Uh, we expect rate cuts from 1Q calendar year 24, so more or less the Feb meeting is where we are building in. We, okay. are, we are expecting that to be premised on the inflation improvement coming through. Oh, right. Uh, well, uh, unfortunately, uh, ladies, the out of time, but this is an interesting discussion. Uh, uh, Sorel, I would worry if the Reserve Bank going into the October policy will have a 7% Q1 GDP behind them, even by your reckoning. And, uh, you know, a, a, a whatever, four, uh, a, probably a 5% inflation for the month of August. They will only have August numbers. May find it very difficult to cut with that kind of a backdrop. But I think the broad points the two of them are making is that... Uh, uh, a greater slowdown is expected on Nomura's part and therefore uh, a cut is early, whereas uh, Morgan Stanley is expecting a cut only in February. Meanwhile, the swap market has priced it, priced the rate cut all the way to April. We have to wrap up on that note on Bazaar. The discussion has just started and we will be discussing these things in the days to come. Chartbusters coming up next.